Hey guys, Nick here. Thanks for coming by. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up video where I can give you guys a little bit in more information on a huge topic that I get asked about a lot, um, and that is your MELT score. Um, guys, this is something that uh, everybody with liver disease needs to be aware of and, and really needs to be educated on because it is a huge huge, huge piece of your journey, of your diagnosis, uh, where you are with your diagnosis, whether you need a liver transplant, whether you don't. Um, uh, the, the score tells you a lot of different things. <clears throat> and I did a video uh, a long time ago. It was one of my first videos about MELD score. And uh, I, I did a good amount of research, and I kind of made it uh, comprehensive, you know, pretty, uh, uh, I think, toot my own horn. I think I did a pretty good job with it, but uh, I wanted to revisit it and kind of go over some things that I've been asked by other people and some things that I've kind of learned along the way. Um, so, guys, what your MELD score is, is basically a number that goes from 6 to 40, um, and it's based on certain lab and blood tests, um, as well as any uh, data received from uh, dialysis that you may have received. You don't have to be on dialysis or have had a dialysis procedure uh, in order to get your MELD score. But if you do, that is kind of taken into, um, taken into account. The reason for that is because they want to check on how your kidneys are functioning and see if you're having any renal issues or renal failure. Now, the crappy thing about it is, is that if your kidneys aren't functioning well, there's really nothing that you can do for your liver. So it took me about 14 months from the time I was diagnosed to get my liver or to get my kidneys to a point where um, they were functioning well. I wasn't dehydrated. I wasn't developing kidney stones or, or anything like that. So um, basically what your MELD score does is it's a, it's a prediction of what the, uh, your survival rate um, will be with, for the next 90 days if you do have liver disease. Now, I'm going to stop there because I want to reiterate something. Um, your MELD score, and as you guys know, I say all the time, your prognosis is not a death sentence. Um, remember, I said that MELD scores go from 6 to 40. When I was checked into the hospital, guys, I was at like a 37. I mean, you, you don't get much higher than that, you know, without basically inevitably dying um, and, and in pretty quick fashion. Um, so the higher the score, the more urgent is the need is for a transplant, um, and the more likely that you are to receive uh, a, a liver from a deceased donor if one comes available. Now, I want to back up a little bit and just give some clarification. Um, just because a liver might be available and it might be a match for you doesn't mean it's going to come to you. Now, there's a huge variety of things that can happen. Um, there could be somebody that's been on the wait list longer than you that maybe is a little bit more qualified um, to receive the letter, and I'll go into the liver, and I'll go into some of those specifics. Um, it's also important to, to know that uh, when a liver does become available, um, whenever a person passes away, uh, once the organs are harvested from the donor, I hate that term, but that's the term that they use. Uh, once the organs are harvested, they are not checked in the hospital at that time. They are taken immediately. They are put on ice or whatever the correct method of transport is, and they are sent to the hospital where the patient is to receive that organ. Upon the time that the organ gets there, that's when they do the inspection uh, because it's just it's you have very limited time to get that organ out and get it where it needs to go. Little sidetrack there. Um, but what's used to determine your MELD score is your creatinine, your bilirubin, your sodium, and your INR. Now, those are levels that um, are pulled through a basic blood test. 
I believe the INR, or you might hear it called PT INR. Oftentimes that needs to be done on a separate test, but it's a pretty simple, um, uh, simple blood test. So you don't have to have like a dozen different blood tests to give you this result. Now, so what happens is, and I would recommend actually getting uh, an app on your phone. There are pocket meld score calculators because the formula is just ridiculous. Um, I'm not a math person, but it's, it's a bit complex. So, you know, use one of those. So your meld score, in order to qualify for a transplant, it generally needs to be 15 or higher to be able to receive that liver. Um, now, your MELD score, along with your age, your blood type, um, your lifestyle, things like that determine how big of a priority you are to actually receive that liver. Now, uh, I want to, I'm going to specify a couple of things, um, two really, really big points that I'll give you some information on. But I also want to reiterate that nothing happens fast during this process. The only thing that happens fast is when they know they have a liver, they know that there's a match, your protocol has been met. Once that happens, it really, you know, it really speeds along. But um, the preparation for that takes months and weeks and sometimes years. Um, so there's some things that you'll need to do on your side in order to, to be ready. Now, um, one thing I will say is that your MELD score doesn't really stay stable. It'll often fluctuate between a few, uh, within a few points. There's a lot of reasons why that can happen. Um, you remember me talking about the kidneys earlier. Um, that's primarily has to do with your creatinine level. So the more dehydrated you are or the less your kidneys are functioning, the higher that creatinine is going to be. Um, so, you know, if you're dehydrated that day or, you know, for, for whatever reason, your kidneys just aren't functioning right, that will cause your melt score to go, you know, to fluctuate. Also, if you fasted or if you've not fasted, um, as we all know, you need to stay away from sodium if you have liver disease. So if you've been taking in a lot of sodium, that salt content is going to be high and it's going to throw, throw that melt score off. Um, so what they're going to look at once it's determined that your MELD score is at or above the level that uh, means you need a transplant, they have to look and see if you're physically able to handle the surgery. Guys, when I went into the hospital, there could have been a perfect liver right in the room right next to me. I could have shared a room with somebody that passed away and their liver could be perfect. I wouldn't have gotten that liver because... I would not have been able to survive the surgery. I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't mentally there. I was having encephalopathy. So there was just a lot of stuff going on. So they wouldn't even have given it to me. It would have gone somewhere else. Um, they're also going to have to take into account of what's the cause of your diagnosis. Is it drinking? Um, do you have NASH? Um, do you have diabetes? Do you have a fatty liver? Is it um, fibrosis, you know, what's, what's causing the need for this, this transplant? Um, if it's because of drinking, I'll tell you right now, the first thing that's going to have to go is that booze to even be remotely considered for a transplant. You will have a lot of other hurdles that you're going to have to jump through as opposed to someone that's not a drinker that, uh, that caused their liver disease. Um, a big thing that's going to happen is they're likely going to be like, you need to go to rehab. Whether you've had long uh, stints of it without drinking, uh, months, years, it's not going to matter. They will have, they will most likely, almost certainly make you go into a rehab recovery program completely uh, until you're done. I mean, completing the entire program. Might be a 30 day program, it might be a three month program, but you will have to complete it. Um, it's, it's basically, you know, there's lengthy programs that will test you for alcohol throughout the process. That information is sent over to your doctor. You'll have to sign waivers saying that they can send this information to your doctor. They will keep up with your progress, how active you're being in the program. Um, what's your attendance like and, and things like that. And all of this goes towards not just showing that you can complete a program, 
but it's also seeing how serious you really are about getting better and making sure that um, you're you're doing your part of of, of the bargain. Um, so you you can't beat the hospital tests. I'll go ahead and tell you that. Um, when you go in for your doctor's appointment, they will test your blood for ethanol. Uh, when they do that, you can tell if you've had any alcohol at all within the last eight, nine, ten months. I know for sure. May even be able to go longer, um, and it stays in your system. So, guys, they do check that stuff. And once you enter the transplant program, if you start drinking again, you're out of the program. There's no coming back. Um, there's not a lot of livers to go around. So uh, that, that's something really, you know, you really, really have to be dedicated to. Um, and the last thing I already talked about, how your MELD score will kind of fluctuate, you know, a few points here and there. Um, keep that uh, conversation going with your nephrologist or your kidney doctor, as well as your GI physician, and make sure that your primary care physician is kept in the loop as well. Um, guys, remember, you know, your MELD score can drastically improve. Um, you know, mine is about half, you know, of what it was when I was basically at death's door. So um, it's still very limiting in a lot of ways. But, um, guys, I'll tell you, you know, if you'll, if you'll stick with it and you, you keep working with the docs, they'll work with you. Um, so I hope I've cleared up a little bit more about MELD score, giving you guys a little bit more info. Um, there is a pediatric MELD score type thing, but I haven't researched that, so I'm not going to comment on it, so I don't know the details about it. But, um, you know, and remember, just leave in the comments below if there's any topics that you'd like specifically for me to discuss or anything that you felt like I might have missed or any clarification on. Um, as always, guys, uh, in the description box below is a link to my Facebook group for uh, liver disease and cirrhosis support. Guys, the group is growing. I couldn't be happier about it. There's some awesome people in there, um, and we've, we've all shared a whole lot of, of different uh, battles with not just ourselves, but with family members, children that are sick, parents that are sick, and things like that. So it it's really is a great group. So just click the link um, and request to join, and you're in. Um, I appreciate you guys coming by and spending some time with me, and I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later.